you see natural lights and trees and all these fun stuff and I would have really loved to take these glasses off but at the end of the day then I'll be squinting the whole time through the entire uh, live but we give the Lord thanks for those who are on those who are actually tuning in right now and uh, God bless each and every single one of you um, today I wanted to touch a little bit on the prophetic and uh, when we speak about prophets uh, come closer come come closer guys come closer to me uh, don't be too far come when, when we speak about prophets I want you guys to understand that prophets are not natural mortal people uh, if you're not careful you will actually it's easy for people to demonize prophets because the truth of the matter is prophets do not operate like every other pastor every other minister we don't try to fit in with everybody else as a matter of fact we stand out like a sore thumb meaning that uh, the way uh, how the world may look at us is weird they may look at us as well so high, uh, spiritual like everything they do is like there's a there, there's a reason why and it's much deeper than than what anybody is saying would be saying and even if they oppose against what prophets do it's because of their lack of understanding concerning the Spirit of God one thing you get to understand is that whenever God speaks to a prophet of God he speaks to them to help people or to warn people I always tell people if you know if God sends you to a prophet or leads a prophet to you it's one out of two things a blessing or a warning a blessing or a warning honestly uh, yes the prophet is there to help you and the warning is also to help you the blessing is also to help you and a lot of times people don't understand and they they demonize prophets of God because they can't understand them listen listen to this now the reason why they also demonize us is because God never called them to us that's why even the Lord Jesus Christ he said it in the book of Matthews he said uh, the only reason why you guys would have known about me is if my father had revealed it to you so if God the father did not reveal it to the disciples they wouldn't have known who Jesus Christ was the woman sitting at the well she went there to get some water to give for herself and for uh, the man that she was living with Jesus sees her he goes there he says uh, I want something to drink can you fetch me some water and he's looking at her and he's talking with her and he's ministering to her and letting her know uh, you don't have just uh, one husband you have five but Jesus is able to tell her and he's, of course you know Jesus Christ was a prophet right and you know that Jesus is telling her what's going on in her life and it's letting her know if you drink from this cup you will never thirst again no matter how thirsty you may be even though you may be looking for water to drink right now but if you drink from my cup you will never thirst again as a prophet even the disciples coming is looking and is wondering why are you speaking to her we know who she is like you we, we don't even talk to people like that Jesus is saying the kingdom of God is here and now no matter who she is no matter what she's done I'm here to do my father's work so one thing you get to understand is that prophets are not ordinary people. Whether it be a prophet, the, a male, or the prophet, a female. Prophetess is just the, 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 the name that is used uh, for man to understand that this is a female prophet. But the truth of the matter is, she's still a prophet. You get what I'm saying? That's why the word says he's pouring his spirit upon what? All flesh not just male but you have females also one of the things I get to understand is the reason why a lot of people do not understand the realms of the, the spirit the things of the spirit of God is one because God has not revealed it to them if God hasn't revealed it to you you will never understand the mysteries of God never you may try and say, well, I really truly want to know more. But the truth of the matter is, if he does not draw you to himself, mm 
There's no way that you'll be able to seek him and find him. This is why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Meaning that if he's saying to seek, that means he, he, he's saying, find me. Mm -hmm. I'm valuable. I know my value. I'm not going to be easily seen by every and anyone. Hello? But the thing of it is, and I want you to understand is, you can never understand prophets of God if you lack encounter with God. You cannot move in the spirit of God without the Holy Spirit himself helping you. This is why if you read the book of John, Jesus said, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will come. He will teach you all things concerning me. He's our comforter, your comforter. So even Jesus is saying, hey, you know, I have to go. And, 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 and trust me, when I leave, somebody else will come. And he will comfort you. He will teach you all things concerning me. Meaning that every single thing the Holy Spirit comes to teach you, he will never even tell you anything outside of who I am. He will only teach you things that always leads to me, the Lord Jesus Christ. And nobody can get to the Father except through me. Mm. One of the things I want you to understand is, I'm going to show you a perfect example. How many, a lot, I'm sure you guys watch, uh, or you've read, I'm sorry, uh, Jonah and the whale, right? You know, God looked at Jonah, told Jonah, hey, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to go to preach the word. I want you to go ahead and I want you to do what I told you to do. Now, Jonah is hiding because Jonah does not want to go to Nineveh. Because Jonah knew that Nineveh, the grounds of Nineveh, nothing but idol worshiping. If you, if you, if you read <laughs> and you're a, a scholar in theology, you'll get to understand that Nineveh was a place where they worshipped sea gods. <coughs> Sorry. They worship sea gods. And as they're worshipping sea gods, God is like, hey, go help them. Go and, and uh, preach the word. Go ahead and do your thing. Now, watch this now. He disobeys God. He's disobeying God. He's running away. See, <laughs> let me explain something about prophets of God. We can't escape God. Mm. When he chooses you as a prophet to speak his word. And I'm going to break down something also. There's a difference between prophet by birth and prophet by impartation. A prophet by birth has seen the Lord Jesus Christ and had an encounter with God. Amen. Notice I said, I didn't say see God face to face because we know no man can see God and what? Live. Impossible. But a prophet by birth has met the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Mm -hmm. He has shown himself. The Lord has visited him. An angel of the Lord came, spoke. We're not talking about make belief. Now the difference between uh, the born prophet and the prophet by impartation, the prophet by impartation flows from the grace of the prophet that anointed him and imparted to him that which he has from God. If you read carefully in the book of Kings, first Kings, you get to understand something very interesting. We know about the story with Jezebel and Ahab. And we know that Jezebel called uh, a stressed out prophet Elijah because, you know, he was going through depression. And we know that prophet Elijah ran into a cave. He ran into the cave. He's telling God, God, take me. I don't want to be here anymore. He's depressed. God listens to him. God says, okay. I want you to go and meet this guy, Elisha. And your spirit will be upon him. And he, I have anointed to be prophet in thy room. Elisha was not a born prophet. Elisha was a prophet by impartation. The Bible then tells you that prophet Elijah saw prophet Elisha, stood afar off and was just watching him. There was an impartation taking place in the spirit. Just by prophet Elijah positioning himself. Prophet Elijah. Prophet Elisha, I'm sorry, received impartation. 
See, you can be around a prophet and receive impartation even though you weren't born a prophet. But the most important part was this. The Bible said that God had placed the spirit upon him. The spirit of his father before prophet Elijah met him. Meaning, anyone that follows a true prophet of God, they're the ones that God had given. And listen carefully. The spirit of that prophet imparted upon them. In other words, if you aren't called to a prophet of the Lord, you will never serve them wholeheartedly. Anyone that is not called to you, they will easily leave you is what I'm saying. Mm. Just yesterday at church, uh, we were talking about uh, with Jesus, the multitudes left. And after they left, Jesus spoke to the disciples, the 12. And he's teaching the disciples, the 12. Mysteries and things of the spirit that he never taught to the other uh, uh, multitude of people that left him. Why? Because Jesus knew, how can I cast my pearls to swine? People who will eventually one day turn against me, fight me, ridicule me, spit on me. Everything that I'm teaching, they won't even receive it. Why? They were not called to Jesus Christ. The 12 were called by God the Father to Jesus Christ. Mm. There are people that if you're not careful, they'll mess you up. Why? Because they're not called to you. Hello? Yeah. This is why the Bible said the prophet is not welcome in his own place, in his own city. Meaning that you will feel comfortable at home with your family and you think they'll accept you but the truth is they have not accepted you this is why the lord will take you from your family and put you somewhere else why because your family can stifle the anointing on your life wow. you could be around people that you love wholeheartedly but the truth of the matter is being around them does not mean that they are supposed to be around you and they can stifle you, the anointing that the Lord has placed upon you. Mm. Hello? Yes. Mm. You don't ever want that. So imagine you are, are comfortable in a place where you're being stifled in the spirit. Mm. So physically you're comfortable. But spiritually you're being stifled. Meaning you cannot grow in God the way you're supposed to. Why? Because you have not been positioned where you're supposed to be. Mm. Now the issue is you don't want to separate yourself. That's why the word says, come from among them. God looks at Abraham, tells Abraham, get up and leave. Why did God tell him that? God told prophet Abraham that because prophet Abraham would have never stepped into what he stepped into had he not moved from his family from the place of comfortability you want to be unlocked in the spirit you cannot stay in the same place where you're being locked mm. you have to leave you have to separate yourself mm -hmm. don't just stay remaining around people because you love them and you say well because I love them mm -hmm. I don't want to leave if I leave then who will help if God is telling you to move, if God is telling you to shift, if God is telling you, step from this place, go to this place, there's a reason why. Mm -hmm. It means you're being stifled. Stifled? Yes. Stifled? Stifled. Stifled. In other words, you're being, uh, uh, what is the other word? Uh, uh, when you can't breathe. Suffocated. Suffocated. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Meaning that in the physical you can breathe, but in the spirit you cannot. Mm. In other words, there is a blockage in the spirit causing you to not be able to walk in the fullness of God. Live in the fullness of God. You can't live in the overflow. If you have yet to understand that God is taking you from a place where you're being quenched. In other words, visualize your life where there's a dam in front of you. Nothing can flow. You feel so dry. Until something breaks that dam, then there's an outpouring of where you are just drinking, of where you are just sitting. So now you realize, nah, now 
I don't feel stifled. I don't feel like I'm thirsty anymore. Mm -hmm. This is why some of you, some places you're in right now, it's like nothing is happening. You're wondering what's going on. It's because you shouldn't be there. Hello? You're wondering what's going on. Nothing is changing. You're looking at your life. For the past four or five years, your life has still been the same. Mm. Nothing has changed. You haven't gotten closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. You haven't, you're being stifled. You can't breathe. You're going through depression. There's heaviness on you. Ah. Now there's a difference between the heaviness that you feel because of disobedience now. Because there was a heaviness that Jonah felt because of the pressure of him obeying God. And Jonah is sitting there and Jonah is like, ah, me, I'm not going there. Why am I going there? Jonah is sitting there and Jonah is saying, I don't want to. He runs away. He thought he could escape God. And what happened? We know the story. The big whale came, swallowed him up. And in swallowing him up, the, the whale got up, spat him exactly on the same land that he was running from. But all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. So when there's purpose on your life, you will always prosper. Where God has placed you, you have to shine for Jesus. You have no choice. Even though things may take time, you will, have, you will always prosper no matter what. Is what I'm saying making sense? Mm -hmm. So God, is, God always separates you, isolates you, to bless you there are certain things you will never get if you have the wrong people in your ears mm. that's why one thing you get to understand not every prophet of God God has a given the grace to pastor a church some prophets God just told them to prophesy and keep it moving they'll travel all over the world to keep it moving to speak and that's it some prophets, God is saying, just stay right here. I'm giving you a church to pastor, the grace to pastor. Yes, you will travel, but I'll give you people that will be there where they'll be able to be mentored, taught. They will receive impartation. They'll be placed in thy room to minister. They'll receive impartation. They'll float in the prophetic. They'll receive grace. Are we here? What's people on IG saying? Tell the truth. IG, send some fire emojis. Are we here? So one of the things you get to understand, God looks at prophet Jonah and tells Jonah, hey Jonah, I want you to go and I want you to speak to Nineveh. But understand that he sent, I'm going to show you guys something. Understand that he sent prophet Jonah to speak to Nineveh because Nineveh was worshipping other gods. Mm. God, instead of God wiping them out, God wanted to save them, give them a chance to, to truly turn to him. Prophets of God, anointed by God, chosen by God. They are always sent to places that you wonder, why is God sending me here? Mm -hmm. But he's sending them to free his people. Amen. To bring deliverance to his people. To bring salvation to his people. Mm -hmm. Now this is the issue now, and I'm coming up to this. In churches today, we like to follow the the, the trends where everybody is saying, well, this could never be a prophet of God if he has earrings, tattoos, piercing, all these other things. Now, one thing you get to understand is, if you read throughout the Bible, every prophet obeyed God, but they, listen carefully, they did not look the same way. If you read carefully in the book of 1 Corinthians, I believe, and Paul is talking about uh, not having long hair that it is an embarrassment or it's a disgrace right to have long hair yet you read carefully that samson had a, had long hair why did samson have long hair it was his strength 
that long hair me meant what? Strength. I said something uh, before and I'll say it again. If Jesus Christ was to, if he had came in this modern day time, many would have, Christians especially, would have missed him. Because the church has given us a picture of what or who a prophet should look like. And if it's not to their expectation and it's not to their posture and their frame of thought, then they demonize prophets of God because they don't match up to the expectation and the physique as the church implies for them to look, dress, and carry themselves. Mm. So they demonize prophets because, oh, this prophet has a piercing, this prophet has a nose ring, this prophet has a, a tattoo, and they don't understand. Yet the prophet is winning souls for the kingdom. So right now, perfect example. If, if the Lord said to me, open your shirt, people online will watch and say, that could never be a prophet. Mm. Yet God looked and spoke to prophet uh, 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 Isaiah and said, for three years, go and preach naked. Mm -hmm. So what would he have told a prophet of God if God told him right now, go and preach naked? Can I tell you something? When God looks at you, he does not see your clothes. He sees your nakedness. If you read the book of Genesis, you get to understand. The form of man in God's likeness, in God's image, had nothing to do with clothes. Who told you that God is talking about clothes? Where in the Bible tell you that God ever mentioned clothes? Clothes came into place when sin entered. Mm -hmm. God doesn't care about your clothes. Why do you think the word says render your heart and not your garment? Because God does not care about your clothes. When God looks at you, all he sees is your nakedness. Mm -hmm. If you read carefully in the book of Genesis, you get to understand something very interesting. The Bible said something very beautiful. When God created man, he created in his own likeness and in his own image. Meaning that God expects us to always be naked before him. Because that is who he is. Hello? But carefully, listen now. You get to understand that after they ate the fruit, the Bible said that he died and his eyes became what? Open. Meaning that now he realized he was naked so he said uh, he hid himself from God. God comes out, God is asking, Adam, where are you? Adam was so afraid. Oh, so hold on. So now there's you being afraid. In God, there's no fear. The fear of God is reverence. The fear of God is not you being afraid where you're timid. The fear of God causes you to be bold. Hello? You read carefully, you get to understand. Adam and Eve, their eyes is open. But they surely died. Meaning that they spiritually died. And their physical eyes became open. Where now they, their spiritual eyes closed and their physical eyes opened. So in other words, this entire time Adam was in the Garden of Eden, he was fully one million percent spirit. They knew Eve spirit. Her nakedness was not nakedness that we call today. It would not be nakedness. In the spirit, her nakedness was clothed. Hello? Her nakedness to God is being clothed. To us, we call it shame. To God, he calls it clothed. When God looks at you and I, he doesn't see the clothes. He doesn't care about this. When sin entered, we started caring about this. God still has not cared about this. All he cares about is your heart and he sees you and you're naked before him now the issue is this is the funny part now when we go to God to pray we try to go to God clothed in other words we don't tell the Lord the truth about ourselves 
we all we try our hardest to sit there and say eh father forgive me of my sins you know my sins forgive me of them and yet god is looking at you like eh, what is it so you're busy you, you see what i'm saying because hey jesus And even when you look at it and you say, uh, but I'm a sinner, God is saying, uh, even though, yes, you are a sinner, but to me, watch this now, but to me, sin is your consciousness. <laughs> when he looks at you, he does not see sin. When he looks at you, he sees that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, he re understand this. <coughs> Sorry, understand this. Uh, understand this. God is has no sin in him. You were created by God. So when God sees you, he sees himself, your spirit. Yes, you have a soul, you live in a body. We know that the enemy can only attack your soul and can only attack your body. But cannot touch your spirit. Mm. Can never. He can't. He cannot touch your spirit. Why? Because your spirit belongs to God. Your spirit is God. Thank you. If you, if you read carefully, okay, check this out, right? If you read carefully, the word said something very interesting. It's the spirit that quickeneth and the flesh profits nothing. Anything to do with the spirit, your body, your flesh will never like. This is why there's a fight in your soul. There's a fight. Why? Because your spirit man is crying out. Your soul does not want to yield. Are we here? Deep inside you say to yourself, you know, I want to change. Deep inside you cry out, you say, changing is very important. I want to change. I want to change from being this person. I want to change. Why? The, your spirit man is crying out. This is why whenever, listen carefully, addiction is a spirit that attacks your soul and it attacks your soul in a place where you find that individual is fighting with themselves meaning that there is a fight between the spirit and the soul the soul doesn't want to yield it's a fight and to be honest with you what I love about the Lord Jesus Christ is he takes that away from you he is he, the only one that has the power to deliver you from that no matter how you try to deliver yourself, impossible. You may try to help yourself, but if the Lord Jesus Christ does not deliver you, you'll never be delivered. I'm going to teach you another thing. One thing you get to understand, God will never deliver you from your, uh, something you have befriended. That's your job. So if you have made it a habit to do something, the Lord is not going to get up and just deliver you from it. You have to be the one. To get up and say, you know, enough is enough. A will. Our yes. Will, right? It's your will. You have to get up and say, eh, this thing. Hey, in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to do repeat myself. It's called discipline. Now, where there's a lack of discipline, there's destruction. Every prophet of God, every, listen, living in the spirit you have to be disciplined. You have to live a disciplined life. Praying. You have to discipline yourself to pray. You have to discipline yourself to read the word. You have to discipline. If you don't discipline yourself, how can you ever be great on earth? If you don't discipline yourself to... My, like, for example, one of my sons, he's a, a barber. So if he doesn't discipline himself to... to, to, to do better at perfecting his craft as a barber. He'll never be a great barber. 
So many of the time we lack the principles of, uh, uh, of, of success, which is disciplining oneself. It's like the same thing when people, you know, we all, like, yeah, Christians ask for money all the time. And nothing is wrong with asking for money, but God knows our needs. You get what I'm saying? You look and you say to yourself, eh? so one thing you get to understand is you can't get up and just, you shouldn't just ask for money. The truth of the matter is don't just ask the Lord for money. Ask him to give you ideas to make wealth because that's what the word is saying. He will give you ideas to make wealth. And that's something even I am understanding as I'm growing. I'm young, but I'm growing. I'm understanding. I'm learning. The Lord is teaching me and the Lord is showing me these things. It's needed. I have to... You know what I'm saying? Instead of asking for money, you don't want every end of month you're asking for the same amount every single time. God wants you to have... Um, a stream of income <laughs> way to build your business so that way you don't have to ever worry about money because anything God gives you he gives it to you that will last not only for you but generations after so you'll be prosperous you'll be wealthy and then you find that your family your children after their children's children and their so it becomes a generational wealth God looks at David and tell David I said David guess what I'll do David is so bent on wanting to build God a house but God is saying your hand has too much blood what I'll do your your father he'll be the one that will uh, your son I'm sorry he'll be the one that will build the house Solomon David couldn't build a house his hand was too much has too much blood and God gives David generational wealth for not only himself but for his son and for the children thereafter. And guess what? Because we're from the seed of Abraham, we're also from the lineage of David. So you have no choice but to prosper. It's in our DNA. It doesn't matter. If you want to carry your last name and the legacy of your last name on earth, go ahead by all means, but not me. Definitely not me, boy. We, uh, we ain't about that life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. IG, you here? I was convicted. <laughs> I'm telling you. There's no way you could just sit and just say to yourself, hey, I'm just going to, this is who I am. I'm going to keep this name. That is, I'm just going to. Then if you do that, then you're just, you're limiting yourself. You're literally telling the Lord, I don't want what you have for me. I want what my family name holds for me. And the truth of the matter is, if there's no expectation, if there's no expectation, then you'll never be able to receive. Why? Because you're not in expectancy. Mm -hmm. That's deep. If you're in expectation, you'll receive something even greater, far greater than you've been asking God, uh, thinking about all the, you know, it, I'm serious. So I want you to understand now in coming to, uh, when it comes to the prophetic, when you are spiritually minded, I want you to understand something. When you are walking with the Lord, there is nothing normal about you you are now an abnormal human being meaning that everything that you do it has everything to do with the things of god and anything to do with the things of god is done in the spirit so even if you do something physical you did it it made you look crazy in the physical but it was because something needed to be triggered in the spirit mm -hmm. So many people may say, well, why is Prophet Junior sitting outside in the, why didn't he go to the church to shoot the life? Because God didn't tell me that. To you, you may say, hey, that's dumb. Well, go to the church, do this, do that. But if God didn't tell me, why should I listen to you? So could it be that God is saying, I'm, I'm sending you out there to, the, to, to do whatever in the open like this because people will see and know who I am through you. And people come from all over the world. Could it be a prophetic activation? 
So you have to always remember that. Anything God tells you to do, he tells you to do it because of something that is about to be birthed forth with it, uh, by you. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Absolutely. So don't, you, can't, you can't try to fit in. As you move in the spirit, as you live in the spirit, you cannot try to fit in. This is why the Bible says this. It is the spirit that is being quickened. The flesh profits nothing. Meaning that the flesh will always be put down. Be casted down. The, in other words, you're going to look crazy. You're going to look abnormal. You, you, your flesh will profit nothing from it. But your spirit will be quickened. So everybody may look at you weird and say, "Yo, there's just something, something must be wrong with this guy. Oh, well, why is he acting like that? Why is it every evening he has to go and open his mouth and just say, uh, hallelujah, 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 five times? Yeah, you don't know if that... <laughs> Jesus, if you look carefully, when Jesus was performing miracles, Jesus spat in the ground, made mud, and placed it over the eyes of, 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 of the man, and he saw... He washed it off. He saw. What about when, when the Lord looked at Elijah and, and, and came to Elisha, I'm sorry. And, and the king came and said, he's sick. He was sick with leprosy. He was sick with all these things. What do you think happened? Prophet Elisha looked at him and said, tell him to go dip in the Jordan seven times. Go dip in what? what? I, as a matter of fact, Elisha didn't even go to him personally. Elisha said the word. To Gehazi to tell the, 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 the king. The king was even upset that hey, why didn't Prophet Elisha come to me personally and give me this word? Mm -hmm. God told him, do not go down there. Send the word. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing. We, uh, prophets of God, we, we don't follow the trend of following every pastor that dresses up in a tie to do a life. We, we, we're not like, if God, listen, if God tells a prophet to have tattoos, to have piercing, it's because of the people God is sending the prophet to. Are you here? Even the bird is agreeing with me. Amen. Hello. Don't try to fit in. Uh, one of my sons, he has tattoos and everything. You think I should look at him and say, uh, don't come around me because you have tattoos. The devil is a liar. Uh, so, uh, God is clearly doing something. So if God is doing something, how can I... You get what I'm saying? I personally don't have them, but doesn't mean that if another prophet of God, like for example, Prophet Lo, powerful man of God. Just today I was looking at a, 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 at a healed conference. I was looking at uh, what was going on, which by far healed conference was off the chains, which by far when I look at um, uh, healed uh, service, prophetic service on Sunday, this woman got out of the wheelchair, yet you have people demonizing the man of God. For what? Why don't you show a video of you praying for someone and they're coming out of a wheelchair? You can't do it. Why? Because you don't have the power of God. God is not within you. What you have time to do is to criticize the man of God or the men of God or the women of God. So let me ask you a question. You think you're doing God a huge favor by criticizing other men of God that God has chosen by birth. You remember, he's not... Prophets like Prophet Law, Prophet like Prophet Passion, my, my spiritual father, Prophet uh, Anthony Mackenzie, myself, we, we, nobody laid hands on us to give us impartation. We were born prophets. You know my story, literally like Moses, adopted. Three months old, my mother adopted me. My biological mother died. The Lord showed it to me when I was, uh, as I got older. The Lord Jesus came to me, spoke to me. I, even the angel of the Lord came to me. So I'm telling you guys something. It's the truth. People, so they can easily look at us and demonize us. Why? Because I'm in a regular shirt chilling. And if I open my shirt out and I show uh, uh, the chest, they say, and that could never be a prophet of God. Yet God is the one that... That's how I am. That's how the prophet of God is. You have to understand. Stop criticizing who you're not called to be around. You're not called to walk with the prophets. You're called to walk with evangelists. Go walk with the evangelists. Stop criticizing the prophets of God. Mm -hmm. It may look as if we are weird, we are abnormal, 
but we are abnormal and weird to you, but we are quite normal to God. We are in operation concerning the things of God through the Spirit of God. IG, are you here? IG, are you loving this? So stop trying to fit in with everybody. You go to your job, you're speaking in tongues, you're praying in tongues in your breath. The Lord tell you, just go lay hands on the doorpost. Your friends may look at you crazy. Why are you touching the doorpost? Don't worry about that, girl. Don't you worry about that. There are things that God will let you do. Whether if it is God says, take off your shoes and give it to this person. Somebody else will look at you and be like, what are you doing? Why did you just buy your shoes? Why you got to take off your shoes right here, right now, walk barefoot? That has nothing to do with you. God told me something, I'll obey him. God tell prophet Isaiah, marry to a prostitute. What you say? Marry a who? Marry a what? Prophets of God are abnormal men of women of God. There's nothing normal about us. God chose us from in the womb. Some of us by impartation. Why did he choose us? We don't know. But we yield to the Holy Spirit. We yield to the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. We yield to him. The Lord told me, go to the park. Do, do, it, do it at the park. Mm -hmm. Do it live at the park. <laughs> I can't disobey him. This had to happen. It had to happen. Yeah, 100%. God, God, had to, God is doing it this way. I love the view, by the way. It's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So today I want you guys to understand this. Flow. Ask the Holy Spirit to flow. Ask the Holy Spirit to do a new thing in you. You understand? And for those who are here, and if you, want, if you guys want to give, I want to give you guys an opportunity to give. If you would like to, if you feel led to give, go ahead and give. They're going to post the information on. Go ahead and give. Because, listen, God is about to do something powerful. He's doing something new inside of you. And if you're watching, the Lord is even touching those who are sick. Every cold virus, every flu virus, the Lord is removing it in Jesus' name. And for those who are on you, you're praying for those who are unsaved in your family. You are the light of God in your family. And the Lord is visiting your family because of you. Don't stop praying for those who are unsaved in your family. The Lord Jesus Christ will do a new thing in them. Mm -hmm. Trust the process. Trust the process. So if you're here and you want to give, go ahead and give. We love you all. I'll see you guys again. We may do one, another one tomorrow. We may do one for the rest of this week. By the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So, IG, love you all. God bless you. We're going to actually post this on YouTube. So, we'll see you all. Peace.